I'm Brian Fowler, president of Blind Creek Resources Limited, listed on the TSX Venture Exchange, ticker symbol BCK. Blind Creek is focused in the Yukon, Northwest Territories, and British Columbia. The company's key property is the Blend Project, one of the largest undeveloped lead-zinc silver deposits in Western Canada, plus plans to advance the recently acquired, fully permitted historic engineer gold mine in the Atlant District of Northwestern BC. Check us out at blindcreekresources.com. Welcome to White Rock Podcast. Comments made on White Rock Podcast and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ross Buchanan. He's an independent voice in White Rock, British Columbia, concerned with poor water quality. Ross, welcome to the White Rock Podcast. Thank you, Jim. Ross, you found another ingredient in White Rock water. Please tell us about it. Jim, something uh, truly seriously bad is happening in White Rock. Council has made a a real mess out here with our our water. It's a a nightmare. In my own opinion, uh, White Rock water is best suited for flushing. Personally, I stopped drinking um, it a long time ago, having recognized it's nothing but a toxic um, stew. Um, It's uh, primarily composed of um, the, the chemicals that, that are the real issue um, really leave you wondering of it's even water anymore, quite frankly. You can easily see why we have a PhD chemist managing uh, the water system for you, for us out here. We have uh, arsenic, we have uh, manganese, we have chloramine, and now um, White Rock Water has tested positive for glyphosate. Glyphosate, Jim, is the active ingredient and Roundup, the um, the number one used um, herbicide in the province of British Columbia. So White Rock Water tested positive. Uh, Metro Vancouver Water tested negative. That was on August 12th and 13th. Now, I suspect the levels are very low. I suspect the levels are below um, 10 parts per billion, but uh, I don't know about you, but for me, um, I just don't want to be drinking any right Roundup in 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 my water. Could additional yet to be tex- tested toxic ingredients exist in White Rock water? Jim, we don't even know what we don't even know, do we? Um, <laughs> yes, ab- absolutely. There could be other elements, especially if you're not looking for them. Is it possible that glyphosate and other potential toxins that are used on farms above the aquifer? drain into the aquifer over time. Absolutely. What health issues have been linked to that particular chemical? Um, well, to, 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 to glyphosate, uh, the, the big issue is that the World Health Organization has identified it as a probable carcinogen. Um, the state of California has also done that. Specifically, um, when you look at glyphosate, I think of the three A's, ADHD, autism, and Alzheimer's disease. And then, of course, you have the, the hormonal disruption. It's actually an endocrine disruptor, which um, seriously alters both uh, liver and kidney functions. What health issues have been linked to arsenic? You think ar- arsenic, Jim, you want to think cancer. In, in fact, um, maybe a month or so ago, we had Dr. Uh, Trevor Dummer from um, UBC Population Health and the Canadian Cancer Agency come out uh, to speak at a public forum. Um, we, the community, got together and organized the public forum simply because Fraser Health or the city refused to do that. Uh, we had about 150 people there, um, and Dr. Dummer, who is a specialist in the linkage between arsenic and drinking water and cancer, spoke on that topic specifically. Um, he said that he would not um, drink water if it was that six, seven, or eight. That's parts per billion. Um, well, the White Rock water is all six, seven, eight, or nine, or ten, <laughs> quite frankly. So he essentially said he wouldn't drink uh, White Rock water because of the link between um, uh, low-level, long-term consumption of drinking water at those arsenic levels and um, all kinds of cancers, uh, the most prominent one being bladder cancer. You know, we're right across the street here from... Surrey, which uses Metro Vancouver water, Jim, and the difference in terms of the, 
the uh, rate of incidence of bladder cancer um, in White Rock water compared to Metro Vancouver water, which is right across the road from us here, is a factor of 39. The incidence in Metro Vancouver water of uh, bladder cancer from arsenic in drinking water is one per 100,000 and across the road in, in White Rock because we're still drawing these subterranean toxins out of these deep wells that are in the aquifer is in fact 39 um, incidences per 100,000. So um, you go 38 people, well, maybe not that money, but you know, if you're one of the 38, it's uh, pretty serious. What health issues have been linked to manganese? When you think of manganese, Jim, you want to think um, cog- cognitive deficiencies. Um, especially the uh, University of Quebec's got an excellent study out on this, uh, where um, they they linked uh, manganese levels to cognitive deficiencies in children up to and including the age of twelve. We'll have more with Ross Buchanan right after the break. Arctic Star Exploration, operated by a team of proven mine finders, is focused on diamonds in Finland and the Northwest Territories of Canada. A work program is planned for our Finland property that contains diamond-bearing kimberlite. Arctic Star trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ADD, and the Frankfurt Exchange, symbol 82A1. Please visit our website at arcticstar.ca or call us at 604-689-1799. I'm Bill McWilliam, president of Cascadero Copper, CCD on the TSX Venture Exchange. Cesium is one of the world's rarest metals with a growing industrial demand. Drilling is underway on our Tehran property in Argentina to prove up a cesium resource. Cascadero's patent-pending leach process has the potential to make Cascadero the lowest-cost supplier of cesium in the world. Visit our website, cascadero.com, or phone us at 604-924-5504. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ross Buchanan. Ross, what kind of health issues and concerns surround chloramine, which is being used in White Rock water? Yeah, great question. So chloramine, um, the the linkage there, the association is to um, destruction of the immune system. And once the immune system shot, then you're just totally susceptible, right? The barn door is open and everything can walk, walk, walk in. Chloramine, I understand, too kills fish why would you voluntarily drink it yourself (laughs) absolutely i mean you don't have to uh, spend too much time looking at the academic research papers to uh see the true danger of 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 chloramine and at the top of the list is uh the impact not just on nature but the impact in terms of how it releases all the built-up um, mineral toxins that, that have built up on the pipes over the years, and, and, and we're drinking it. <laughs> Greater Vancouver, at least at its Capilano uh, water purification plant, uses ultraviolet light, which of course doesn't leave any chemicals in the water. It gives it a nice kind of a bluish green tint when you get it directly from there. Do you ever wonder why that wasn't used in White Rock? As opposed to chloramine or chlorine, is that what you're suggesting? Yes. To, to defend against the pathogens? Abs- absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, I guess it's probably easier to dump chemicals in. Um, but you take a look at the, you know, there's some wonderful technology available out there and UV's got to be at the top of the list. You know, Metro Vancouver just has a, you know, that world class a uh, label is overused, but boy, oh boy, I really think Metro Vancouver Water System, it's a, it's a billion dollar, it's world class, it serves over three um, million people, and um, White Rock City Council denies us access to it, although it's right across the road, right? They insist on using uh, these wells that are contaminated with subterranean toxins. Well, when you had that horrible condo fire that made uh, hundreds of people homeless, they managed to import water from Surrey to fight that. Do you ever wonder why they can't import the same water now? Oh, they can, Jim. They just choose not to, right? I mean, I was standing, that's li- uh, the condo fire's literally kitty corner from me. I was standing out on the corner at 5, 6 o'clock in the morning watching what was happening. Um, I literally had a Surrey Waterworks engineer beside me on the walkie-talkie. And, um, yeah, it took, took, took them a matter of minutes to open a couple of the uh, 
six valves that give White Rock immediate access to Metro Vancouver water through Surrey. Yeah. I mean, we, we could have Metro Vancouver water in Surrey by noon tomorrow if they uh, really wanted to do that. If they wanted to provide the public pr with safe water, if they wanted to protect the, the public from um, this toxic stew, uh, they could do it very, very easily. Ross, can we rule out that that cocktail of toxins could interact with one another, causing even greater health concerns? Absolutely. Yeah, they call it joint toxicity. And in fact, there's some great 27 studies out there right now, 2017 rather, studies out there right now. California State at Long Beach has done some really nice research on the issue of what happens when arsenic, Just these are just two, right, just arsenic and glyphosate combined. And um, the best way to describe the effect is think about throwing gasoline on um, burning coals. I mean, it just absolutely takes off. Glyphosate is an accelerant to arsenic. We already have high arsenic levels. We already have PhD uh, cancer researchers telling us that they wouldn't drink the water. And now uh, we've identified the presence of low glyphosate in white rock water, albeit at low levels, but still it's an accelerant. Who knows? I guess what we, what, I guess the question is, um, like who, who, who knows that it's safe, right? It hasn't proven to be safe. Why isn't the city of White Rock testing water quality at the tap? Um, I think the answer is pretty clear. They don't. They don't want to know what's ha what's happening. Right? Um, they would have to report on that. We'll have more with Ross Buchanan right after this. Glance Technologies owns and operates Glance Pay, a disruptive mobile payment technology now live in 16 cities in Canada and about to launch in the U.S. With revenues up 664% in the last quarter, Glance Technologies has the potential to be a worldwide leader in an industry projected to grow to $1.3 trillion in three years. Glance Technologies stock symbols are GLNFF in the U.S. and GET in Canada. Find out more at glancepay.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Ross Buchanan. Ross, who is responsible ultimately for the quality of White Rock water, Fraser Health or the city of White Rock? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great question. Um, I think they would both say that they're everyone's responsible. The truth is that when everyone's responsible, nobody's responsible. Um, yeah, there's, the, you know, the fact that even even after studying this issue for a couple years now, Jim, I I, I have trouble answering that question. Um, tell tells you how fuzzy it it really is, and I think the bottom of the line is no one's responsible, and no one's responsible, no one's accountable, and guess what? It's such a mess. Council has made such a mess of this situation. I mean, it's a toxic stew, a huge failure at the faucets. Um, I think that's the way they want it. Do you think Fraser Health and the city of White Rock realize there are comparisons between White Rock and Flint, Michigan? I think I think they have to be able to see that. I mean, there's obvious toxic parallels between what's happening in White Rock and Flint, um, specifically around the conduct of um, the public officials. The narrative from the city revolves around the color of the water. Why is the city not focused on the contents of the water? Exactly. I think because if they did, they'd have to do something about it. You know, um, they they, com they consistently uh, claim that falsely um, that um, White Rock water is safe, and it isn't. Um, what they put forward as being safe is that it meets the the um, operational guidelines. That's not about safety. The operational guidelines. The difference between the operational guidelines and the level of negligible risk that's safe is a factor of uh, 30. So, in fact, the levels of, of arsenic produced by some of the wells in White Rock are actually 30 times greater than what Health Canada, in their own drinking water guideline, considered to be of negligible risk. So the city and Fraser Health is guilty of this too, takes the wording for what's operational considerations and calls that safe. Well, you know, they're, they're, they're miles apart. Is the lack of response from city officials to the poor water quality likely to fuel the demand to amalgamate White Rock with Surrey? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I see that and I hear that uh, on the street all, all the time, every day. Um, not not only that, Jim, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some people aren't asking um, themselves if uh, they aren't looking at the epitome of duplicity and deceit. You know, at the same time as we're being told that the water's safe, it's safe, but we're spending close to $20 million to install new plants. Hmm, I'm a little cute, very confused about that. But we're being told it's safe. We've got Helen Fathers, who's one of the counselors. She's running around telling people that the water is great. In fact, she voted to deny the citizens of White Rock access to safe Metro Vancouver water back on June 3rd. June 10th of 2013. Um, now I'm hearing that just in the last couple of days she's uh, invested $2,000 for a home filtration system. And in fact, I'm looking at her Facebook, uh, a copy of her Facebook site right now. She's got it up on her Facebook site. Um, so she's telling the public one thing, but is taking action to protect herself and her family at the same time. Duplicity? Deceit? Mm, I'll let people decide for them themselves. So the good news is she's protecting her family. Um, the bad news is that they, can, they, they, the city and Fraser Health, continue to conceal uh, the facts from the citizens. The city is using taxpayers' money in an attempt to stop taxpayers from knowing the contents of documents related to the water system. What's the latest on the court challenge and what are they trying to hide from voters? Yeah, I, th- I, th- I think what they're trying to decide, hide is, um, well, first of all, you're absolutely right, right? Just to be clear, the, uh, in a, in a hearing, uh, the adjudicator ruled for the OIPC, the Office of Information and Privacy Commissioner, ruled that, uh, the records I requested need to be seen by the citizens of White Rock. Um, the, City of White Rock became the, I believe it's the first municipality in the history of BC to refuse to comply with an OIPC order and have appealed the order to release the records to the BC Supreme Court. So it's um, a drag them out, um, slow them down kind of process. They're doing everything um, possible to uh, make sure that those public records um, relating back to the business case in June of 2013, um, are not revealed to the to the public, and they're doing it's a, it's a, it's a, it's all about um, petty politics and protecting their place at the trough. Is the new provincial government aware of the poor water quality in White Rock? Um, yes, they are aware. I'm just going to the letter that I sent. So on. August 20th, I sent a letter to Lloyd Struck, who's the um, senior water officer with Fraser Health Authority. I copied in that uh, Dr. Marchbank, who's the president of Fraser Health Authority, Dr. Perry Kendall, who's the provincial health officer, uh, Minister George Hyman, who's the minister in the environment, and Minister Adrian Dix, who's the minister of health. So, yes, they are aware. Is switching the White Rock water feed source from the aquifer to Metro Vancouver water the obvious answer? And why do the powers that be continue to fight the obvious solution? Yes, it is the obvious solution. (laughs) It's been the obvious solution rather than uh, feed the citizens this uh, toxic stew of you know, subterranean toxins and then piling chloramine, and now we got glyphosate on top of that. It is the obvious. <laughs> the question you ask is the question a lot of people in White Rock ask, and I think the answer is it's all about um, preserving um, um, their, their, their place at the trough. It's about petty politics. It's about White Rock Council being c- concerned with a lot of people in White Rock are going, wait a minute, we're under two square miles, we're 20,000 people, we don't even have a high school. Why do we even need this government? Why don't we just hook into Surrey? I don't know if that's the solution or, or, or not, but I think that's why they're resisting hooking into the Metro Vancouver um, water. It just puts them a little closer to a possible amalgamation, and then they would lose their place at the trough. Do the people of White Rock understand how detrimental White Rock water can be to their health? You know, that's kind of an in- 
individual thing. Some people are highly aware of the situation, and other people are pretty oblivious to the to the whole thing. I can tell you at the public forum where we had um, approximately 150 uh, people, they clearly heard the message, and that was just on the relationship between arsenic and cancer. That wasn't about um, the you know the manganese in the drinking water, which leads to the cognitive deficiency. It wasn't about the chloramines in in the in the water. It wasn't about the glyphosate in the water. That was just about arsenic. And I got to tell you, what was interesting? He, he, here's my test. It was an hour after the presentation, and there were still crowds outside um, in the parking lot talking. So a high level of interest. A lot of people have made it their business to learn about the water. And um, uh, I mean, quite frankly, the grocery stores in the area can't keep up with um, bottled or boxed water. A lot of people have moved away from uh, drinking the water. They come to realize that white rock water is best suited for flushing. Should the people involved in this file from the city and the health board be concerned about the possibility of a criminal investigation? Um, I'm not a lawyer, um, but I have read Section 122 of the Criminal Code of Canada. Uh, the Criminal Code of Canada 122, just quickly, briefly, it says, every official who in connection with the duties of his office commits fraud or breach of trust is guilty of an indictable offense and liable to imprisonment. And it goes on and talks about the term. So, Jim, I'm not a lawyer. Um, but 122 of the Criminal Code uh, deals with it uh, very clearly. Um, I do know that on June 10th, 2013, at a secret meeting, um, council, uh, this is a secret closed council meeting, so no public, so without any public consultation or any approval from the public of any type, I know that council voted unanimously, right? All of that council voted in favor to uh, retain the toxic contaminated metal laden um, well water supply rather than joining the safe Metro Vancouver water supply. Um, and that just happened when they made the decision to um, proceed with the acquisition of EBCOR, who, um, which, which was the owner of the water utility at that time. And, and I also know that for months, and, well, in fact, years since 2013, city officials have um, continuously claimed that Metro Vancouver water supply um, wa was not off the table, right, being considered, even though we now know that on June 10th, 2013, um, they had made a decision to deny the citizens of White Rock access to this safe water. So this is just in my opinion, but I have a real hard time understanding how all of this is not fraud or a breach of public trust. Now, this also reminds me, if you recall, back in 2000, Walkerton, Ontario, where they had a massive E. coli outbreak in their water system, but the city ignored it, and they didn't have proper people testing it. And, of course, now that's led to criminal charges. The people involved received a year in jail, the other one nine months of house arrest. Is this something that you could look at, a private prosecution, because you're talking already about a super high bladder cancer rate in your particular small community? I think I think the key is to um, uh, have the BC Supreme Court deny um, White Rock's request to um, continue to conceal the records that the OIPC has ordered them to release. I think once those documents are revealed, um, it it's a whole different ball game, Jim. Ross Kay, a real estate consultant that this show talks to on a weekly basis, says his organization, the wealthy homeowner.ca, cannot recommend buying White Rock real estate simply because of the poor state of the quality of water. Are, are you worried about your real estate values? You know, um, that's certainly a consideration. But to me, it, the more pressing issue is really public health, Jim. Um, I have absolutely no doubt that um, there's a relationship between water quality or health risk, really, and uh, real estate values. Um, and I'm sure there's a lot of developers asking questions about, hmm, what, what, you know, do you, do we really want to 
uh, do business in White Rock. But to me, it's it's the, the real overarching question is about um, public health, and um, I, I think the citizens of White Rock have been denied denied by Fraser Health and the city of White Rock um, the, the the truth, the facts about um, the quality of the water. I've made a personal decision a long time ago just not to use it. Right? It's it's a toxic stew. It's full of contaminants. I wouldn't want to have anything to do with it. Um, you know, it's interesting. We we are one of the few communities north of the Rio Grande that still exclusively relies on uh, toxic subterranean wells um, for drinking water. There are other communities. Mm, uh, Winnipeg, Montreal, as an example, still use the old legacy wells, but not for drinking water. They've moved way past the wells for that purpose. They use the wells just for um, industrial water, and the uh, drinking water system is um, um, draws draws on on ground surface water rather than than groundwater. Simply because over the years we've learned so much about how nasty these subterranean toxins are. And then, like you said, who knows, once you take those subterranean toxins, arsenic and manganese, and combine them with glyphosate and chloramines, who knows what, what, what's happening. What I do know is no one's showing that that, that combination is, is safe. Is there... Have you had any hints yet how long it's going to take the B.C. Supreme Court to rule on releasing that information? Um, no. Um, at this point, all I see is the city of White Rock spending huge dollars with big money downtown lawyers dragging their heels, right? They're, they're, they're looking to uh, drag this out as, as long as possible. What kind of money is it costing you to try to find out the truth? Um, a lot of money, but a lot of time, a lot of a lot of time. You know, there's people helping um, as we well as as <laughs> you know, my my hope would have been, Jim, that when the OIPC ordered um, at, following the hearing ordered the adjudicator said, you know, the citizens of the White Rock need to see these documents, um, that that would have made the documents public. But now. Um, the city of White Rock's working really, really hard. They're very, obviously very, very concerned with uh, what's in those records that the OIPC has ordered released. And um, the question I consistently hear in talking with people on the streets is, wow, what's in those records? <laughs> you know, why are they um, willing to look so bad to hide what's, what's there? If the record was clean, obviously the city would release it right away. One would certainly think so. I, I personally, I tie their um, their extreme efforts to conceal the records that they've been ordered to release to 122 of the Criminal Code, and I think we've already talked about that. Well, we have seen where bad water has resulted in Canadian officials being jailed, mm-hmm. not just slapped with a fine, which mm-hmm. the city would pay. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you think that's one of the reasons why they're trying to hide this information? I think you 120, just said- 122 allows for um, imprisonment for terms of up to five years. Is there any class action or any thought of a class action lawsuit if the released information does show that you've been ingesting a toxic soup in your drinking water? You know, Jim, I don't know enough about class action suits. You know, I hear people throw the words around. I'm just kind of taking it a step at a time. I mean, we do have a huge win. The uh, Office of the Information Privacy Commissioner, the adjudicator, through the public hearing, looked at the facts and ruled that the citizens of White Rock need to see this information. They want to release it to the public, and I'm just taking it a step at, at a time. And again, no idea when the B.C. Supreme Court may rule on this. No, no. Ross, this is not a pleasant situation to be talking about, but I thank you for your time and efforts digging into this. Thank you very much, Jim. We've been speaking with Ross Buchanan, a very concerned citizen in White Rock. By the way, Ross, is there a website or another place people can get more information about this issue? Um, the White Rock, the White Rock Water Alliance, an organization I'm not part of, does have a website, and I'm sorry I don't have access to that right now. But White, oh, actually, White Rock Safe Water Alliance would be the right terminology. Sure, if you Google that, you'll find it. Yep. Thanks again, Ross. 
Thank you, Jim. If you have any questions for the show or our guests, you can email them to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Thanks for listening. Comments made on White Rock Podcast and TalkDigitalNetwork.com are an expression of opinion only. Archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. White Rock Podcast is a production of How Street Media Incorporated.